Hello there. Welcome to another INFJ ramble. Um, I don't really know exactly how I'm going to stitch this ramble together, but it has to do with several different topics. And um, a part of this topic includes why we are here. Um, another topic that's kind of tied into it is um, what people are looking for and wants versus needs. <clears throat> so let's, let's begin. Let's try and stitch these different thoughts together. Anyways, I'm out of frame again. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking about it and I'm like, why are we here? And I was thinking about how, like, I've mentioned this in previous recordings. When I am by myself, I feel the most peace. Um, when I am around people, things get a little bit more complex. And um, I think within human relationships, we're all looking to be loved and to love. But there's so many different like variations and degrees and definitions of what love is. And I think a lot of us um, participate in um, the lower degrees of love. Um, in Greek, I think they categorized it into five different types of love. Like you have brotherly love or um, sensual love or um, playful love. You know, so, I mean, I don't know if that has any, any, um, I don't know. I'm just, I guess my point is there's different variations and degrees of love. And I think the human condition seeks you, seeks to find love and to distribute love. But the thing is, when you're dealing with um, lower degrees of love, like very base forms of love, like, you know, like sex, sexual love, or um, things like that, you're, you're basically basing your relationship on a really unstable foundation. And I think eventually as you mature and as you grow and as you progress on the path, you have a tendency to move through the lower degrees of love into the highest degree of love, which I feel is unconditional. Um, most of the um, lower degrees and mid-range degrees of love, really conditional. Think about it. Like, you expect someone to love you a certain way, and I'm sure they expect you to love them a certain way and to fulfill certain needs in order to, you know, consider it love. But it's really conditional, and it's really fleeting, and it's, it's really um, built upon a really shaky foundation that could collapse at any time. Um, when you move into more unconditional love, I feel like um, you move more into like accepting someone, understanding them, and um, loving them regardless. You know what I mean? It's not about what the person can do to meet your needs versus, you know, it's not even about what you can do to meet the other person's need. It's about two individuals accepting each other and understanding each other respectfully and honorably and graciously. You know what I mean? And um, I think that's what a lot of us strive for. You know, we're, we're looking for love, but we've placed all these conditions on it. And then um, when somebody fails to meet our standard or expectations, then, you know, we just kind of like, I don't know, everything falls apart. <clears throat> so if you're striving to find love, I feel like you need to do it. Um, you need to strive to um, practice unconditional love. And it's so hard because we've been so conditioned by society, by our family, by our colleagues, by everyone and everything around us, right? We've been conditioned. 
So in order to be unconditioned, you have to unlearn everything that you've been taught and told um, or believe in pretty much and just kind of like accept things as they are, understand things as deeply as you can so that you can graciously acknowledge and respect everything in everyone's presence. I don't know if that's making sense. Um, <clears throat> so I think we're here to learn or actually to unlearn everything we've been taught and told and sold so that we can remove the layers that we've um, covered ourselves in to um, get to the essence of who we really are, which is everything. Like everything and everyone is you. So like if you look at a rock or a tree or this cup or, you know, whatever, you just, you, you need to realize that that thing is actually you. You know what I mean? I know it sounds fucking out there and I'm sorry if it doesn't make sense. But yeah, that's what we're striving for. We're striving to love and be loved, but we're settling for like these really lower degrees of love when in actuality we should be, you know, kind of like experiencing each level and degree of love, moving through it and becoming um, unconditional. Um, and we're here to learn the lessons, experience the experiences, meet ourselves and everyone else and in everything else so that we can recognize what is and what is not if that even makes sense I know it's super paradoxical and it's super confusing and complicated yet it is all so very simple <laughs> but um I was also thinking about wants versus needs um, I think a lot of the time we like pursue things that we want it's not necessarily what we need and that's why like we end up in a lot of circumstances or situations that kind of um, go against um, a natural way of life I mean think about it like I feel like the less you need the more you have or the more you have um, I don't know what I'm saying. Wait, the less you need, the more you have, right? And like you have more freedom, you have more flexibility, you have more time for yourself, um, self-care, um, more time for self-reflection, you know what I mean? Because you're not distracted in these otherworldly things, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, the more you have, the less you how do I say I, I don't know how to say it um like the more you want the less you have does that make sense I know I just totally screwed up the last 30 seconds of this video <laughs> because my thoughts were jumbled and I couldn't make sense but if you're following me that's great if you're not following me I don't blame you because I would have been confused too. <laughs> but yeah, I'm working towards a more minimalistic and simple lifestyle. Um, I'm trying to cut back on purchasing or buying or spending my currency on things that I don't really need. You know what I mean? If you think about it, we don't really need much. You know what I mean? Like, I think we like... <clears throat> like to distract ourselves you know so we don't have to face or own up to our shit <laughs> you know what I mean it's fun to like just kind of put things on the back burner and pretend it's not there and go and buy something or you know indulge in sensual addictions you know gratifying the senses but you know eventually you're gonna have to um own up to your stuff and face yourself, you know? So the sooner you do it, the better. Or you can play the game, you know? But I'm trying to, like, get out of the game. And that's the thing, like, I feel like <clears throat> people think or their perception of power is so skewed. You know what I mean? Like, I think people think 
like if you're powerful, that means um, you can use brute force or um, you can um, bully people or manipulate people to control them. But is that really, is that really power? <laughs> or is that just like cowardice? You know what I mean? Because I think a brave person doesn't have to play these games. You know, they can be like very straight up and honest without having to try to manipulate you or bully you or, um, you know, use you and control you to produce, I don't know, energy that they can parasite on. You know, if you're powerful, you don't need to parasite off of anyone. You produce your own power. And then you meet other people who are also empowered and liberated. And you guys create something freaking awesome. Anyhow, it's late. I am tired. I'm about to settle down. And I don't know what compelled me to create this ramble. But that's what was on my mind. If it makes sense to you. If you learned something, that's great. If it doesn't make sense, if you didn't learn anything, that's great too. Tomato, tomato. Um, blessings to one and all. Have a beautiful night and rest well. Amen.